Liberia was Africa's first republic, a shining example of Western democracy, founded in 1822 by freed African-American slaves. But for most of this country's history, Liberia has been ravaged by corrupt governments and civil war. resource-rich nation now has the unenviable distinction of being one of the world's poorest nations. The unemployment rate is currently 80 percent. Those who can find work earn an average of $100 a year. A lot of people don't trust the government anymore. Uh, corruption is very widespread and there is a lot of fear that unless the government can quickly put a handle on the corruption situation, it is really going to be difficult to reconstruct this country. The problem in Liberia is very diverse. It's a huge problem. And it's going to take a lot of efforts, collective efforts, to address that. But the government has to step in, look at how it did business before, and put into place programs that will help ordinary people and the government and the private sector to work collaboratively to move the country forward. Silas Siakor looked beyond the raging turmoil in his homeland and seized an opportunity to expose the warlord president, Charles Taylor. Taylor's regime was using illegal logging revenues to finance militias and death squads. There were human rights violations, including in one example, uh, the militia of a timber company massacred 250 people in a town in eastern Liberia that we went and discovered the mass grave. So business as usual in Liberia was pretty dire. And there was widespread violations of environmental regulations, some of which that Silas and his group had documented. Silas compiled an exhaustive report with his Sustainable Development Institute over a period of several years that clearly listed massive environmental and human rights violations by the lumber industry in conjunction with the Taylor regime. I just couldn't believe that this guy had done this work in Liberia at the time. I can't imagine the personal danger that he put himself at to collect this information and then to write it in such a lucid account that was so compelling. Once we began to report those issues, the government didn't like it at all. President Taylor was quoted by some of the papers as saying, those who wrote that report, if I get a hold of any one of them, they could lose their lives for that. With his evidence in hand, Siakor made his way to the United Nations headquarters to help make his case. Coming from a very small country such as Liberia, arriving in New York for the first time, a massive city, I felt overwhelmed. I have come to the UN to present these issues to members of the Security Council and urging them to impose a ban on the Liberian timber trade. And when I began to interact with people at the UN, I found it quite amazing that people were very willing to listen, to help if you needed their support. Sanctions are a very important political tool, a tool of the Security Council to maintain international peace and security. Either they can go to war or they can proclaim worthy resolutions. Sanctions is something between soldier and words. The UN Security Council, heavily influenced by Silas's report, made the monumental decision to impose sanctions on the lumber industry in Liberia. Could we continue fighting? Yes. Without the flow of ill-gotten funds from illegal logging, President Taylor lost his stranglehold on the economy. In 2003, under mounting pressure, he fled the country. Democratic elections followed. I think if anybody's responsible for sanctions, I think Silas is one of the most important people. At some point, I just stopped and said, well, so small people can actually make a change. And since then, we now focus our attention on how do we work to ensure that what happened before doesn't happen again. And we have made that a focus of all of the debates and discussions that are going on now, both within Liberia and also at the UN. In February 2006, in one of her first official acts, President Johnson Sirleaf 
canceled every logging contract in the country, a clear endorsement of the UN sanctions which resulted directly from Silas's research. For outstanding environmental achievement in Africa, the 2006 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Silas Siakor, Monrovia, Liberia. <laughs>